Okay, so you're going to be doing this video over the course of a couple days. So I need for you when you're done to note the time that you're at. So when you pick the video back up the next day, you can just start where you left off instead of having to fast forward. So, so far in class, we've already done these problems. Um, hold on a second. And just to review with you what the answers were. Okay, this is just you know, a quick glimpse. I'm not going to go over them. Here's the bottom. And so where I want you to start now is on the back. I would like for you to do these uh, six problems, okay? This, just rewrite it as an exponent, okay? Um, and go through these, and then when you're done, I'm going to ask that the sub checks uh, his or her answers with you guys, okay? So anyway, you start out with those, but then what I want to do is um, you're going to after you try those and you know you've checked your answers, go ahead and do these. So we've been graphing and we kind of had the same jobs for A, H, and K. A stretches, compresses, and flips it. You've got H that moves it left or right and you've got K that moves it up or down. So what you're going to be responsible for is knowing what points you need to use when you graph a cer certain function. So what we're going to do right here is just review the parent function points and the shape of the different ones. So these two are from chapter five, see, chapter five, and the parent function points for square root. So we need to pick values for x that will fit on here, but that also have nice, perfect square roots. And then just those numbers that we used were zero, one, four, and nine. I could do 16, but 16 won't fit on here. And I can't use negative numbers because I can't take the square root of a negative number. So just because you have this whole thing doesn't mean you're gonna use all the boxes. So anyway, if I put uh, x in here, square root of 0 is 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then if you graph them, this is what they will look like. So this is the parent function of a square root function. It starts here and then it keeps going, okay? There are issues with the domain. Um, if you look at this one, you know, you start this point at 0, 0, and then this is infinity, infinity. So the domain goes from zero to infinity, and then so does the range from zero to infinity. So just realize you're gonna have domain issues um, and range issues in a square root function. Then we did cube root, and so we tried to pick numbers here that had a nice perfect cube root, and those were these numbers. Again, I'm not using all of them, but then I take the cubed roots, and these are the numbers I get, and you can graph them. And this is the parent function of a cubed root function. Some of you, when we did this chapter five test, switched these two around. So just keep that straight. Um, because there are arrows on both ends, you are not gonna have any domain issues. So it's going from negative infinity to infinity and range is going from negative infinity to infinity. So let's take a look, try a few more, in which you now have A, H, and K coming in. And then you're gonna try a few on your own, okay? So um, let's talk about, again, what A, H, and K do. So just remember, this is a square root. It will be looking like this. Um, two is going to stretch it. Uh, three is going to make it go right. And one is going to make it go up. All right? Well, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So the idea is to take your parent function points. So for room, I'm going to put them this way. And again, I am... Uh, you could go back to the other page, but the numbers that I'm going to use are 0, 1, 4, and 9. I'll take their, their square roots. And in all of these, we're going to let A affect the table, graph that, and then move that left, right, up, or down. So what I need to do is make a new Y by taking the old Ys and multiplying the A. So I'm going to multiply all of these by 2. So multiply it by two, multiply it by two, and then you won't graph these anymore, this x and y, you're gonna graph this x and y. So I'm gonna graph zero, zero, one, two, um, four, four, and nine, six. So that is the start of the transformation. So again, we're gonna let a affect every table and then move left, right, up, down. So now I'm just gonna take these points and go right three, up one, 
right three up one right three up one and even this one you know I can kind of estimate where it's going to be so now my starting point is different uh, it's starting at three one so that and but this arrow is still and it's in the words or the numbers is infinity infinity so when you do your domain you're going to go from 3 to infinity, and your range is going to go from 1 to infinity. Remember, domain is x and range is y. And on the final, um, it's going to ask you to state the transformations. It's going to ask you to come up with the points that you need to make your graph, and then to auto shift them, your domain and range, and if there are asymptotes, which right now we don't have any walls. So here's a cube root. So this is going to flip it. So that shape that we graphed on the other page is going to flip um, like this. And this is going to make it go right, and this one's going to make it go up. So again, we need to make our t-chart. You're going to need to remember these numbers. Maybe if I'm feeling nice, we'll make a little cheat sheet for the final. But for cube roots, these are the numbers we would use. And these are the y's we would get. And again, I'm going to let A, the flip, the stretch, the compressed number, create a new Y column. And this just says, you know, multiply them all by negative 1 or take the opposite. So my new Y is going to change these to positive and these to negatives. And then I don't need this Y anymore. And I'm going to graph negative 8, negative 2. Uh, negative, I'm sorry, negative 8, 2. Ignore that one. I'll get some white out here. So I, I whited that out. So negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 8, negative 2. So again, A will affect the table. And now everything's going to go, sorry, right 1 and up 2. So right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2. And then again, with arrows being on both sides, your domain and your range are both. So I'm just going to write it once like this, going to be from negative infinity to infinity, okay? So now what I want you guys to do is to do one and two, and then the idea is to check with the sub when you guys are done, all right? And again, this is reviewing for your final, so you need to do this, all right? And then you've got three and four here, okay? So note the time. Um, mine's about 7.50, so write that down. Um, and then you're going to pick back up for the next time and we're going to do solving, okay? Okay, so hopefully the whole time thing worked and you're picking back up. We're on the solving. Um, this is a great time to get out your blue uh, cheat sheet that we made. Uh, I don't have it with me, so I'm just going to have to talk about it out loud. But the idea is we're solving for x. And is it the normal or weird side? These are all the normal x's, so you need to make sure you're on that side. There are no x's in which we have more than one type of x. So in all these problems, we're going to be getting x by itself. So if it helps, maybe uh, write those order of operations backwards. And our goal is to start getting that x alone. So first I'm going to subtract the 3. I'm not going to show all these little steps. That gives me 125. There is no multiplication or division to move. So I'm going to get rid of the exponent. To get rid of it, I'm going to cube root it. And that's going to leave me with x minus 4 on this side and 5, not positive 5 or negative 5. Odd roots only give one answer. And now to get x by itself, I'm going to add 4, and my answer is 9. Um, you don't need to worry about extraneous solutions unless the problem is an even root number. So this one's okay because it's a third power. So in problem number 2, you had one like this when you had that test. Um, these are the same type of x. The problem is when you isolate them, they're both in a radical. So what we're going to do is isolate the radicals from each other. So I'm just going to add this whole radical to the other side. And once I do that, I'm going to write my order of operations backwards. Um, there is a just addition and subtraction to move, but it's inside the radical. So I won't get to it until I deal with that exponent step. Same with the multiplying or dividing. So these don't happen. Instead, what I'm going to do first is get rid of the exponent, which is like the cube root, I'm going to cube both sides. And then when those cancel out those cube roots, I'm sorry, square both sides. They're not cube roots. 
Then I'm left with 3x minus 1 and x plus 3. Now I'm down to the same type of x. I'm going to subtract x over and get 2x. And now I'm going to add 1 over for 4. And when I'm done, I get 2. So the main thing I just want to do is make sure that this is not an extraneous solution. So if I put 2 in here and 2 in here, do I get my answer? So putting 2 in here, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 1, I'll get the square root of 5. And when I put 2 in here, 2 plus 3 is also the square root of 5. And the square root of 5 minus the square root of 5 is 0. So this is good. This is not an extraneous solution. All right, number 3. You've had one like this on the latest mile marker. You want to look at this 1 half as a uh, square root, if that helps. Um, and right now, i got to get this x outside of a radical. So I'm going to quickly square both sides. And then I have 10x minus 24 equaling x squared. And if you notice, even before, these were different types of x's. This x was not in a uh, square root. I'm trying to focus a little more. And this 10 was. So now you can see even better that there's more than one type of x. So I'm going to have to factor. I'm going to subtract the 10x and add the 24 over. And you go through your factoring, which I still have that little sticky note from the other day. Um, always try the greatest common factor first. That's not going to happen. You'll have your x instead. But again, because this is x squared, some of you will just go straight to these parentheses and look for factors of 24 that get you to 10. And um, those are going to be 6 and 4. Now be careful, because sometimes 2 and 12 works. Uh, but what I'm going to do is make these both negative. And negative 6 and negative 4 multiply for 24, and then they add for negative 10. And then what makes them 0 is going to be 6 and 4. And now I just want to make sure that these both work. So remember, this is just like a square root. So if I put 10 in here, 10 times 6 is 60. Take away 24. And that's 36. And so I will end up taking the square root of 36 and hoping that I get 6. And I do. And if I put 4 in here, um, 10 times 4 is 40. Take away 24. That'll be 16. And is the square root of 16 4? It is. So no extraneous solutions here. So with that, your job is now to go with these problems. And they are very similar with how you solve them. So take a look at what we did before. Okay. Um, again, I want you to note the time. You're going to stop it and then pick back up where we are. There's a phone ringing in the background. We're just going to have to let it ring because it's not my phone. And note the time and then pick this back up. All right, so the next part of the final, I'm still here, even though you paused and came back the next day, is we are either adding functions, subtracting functions, maybe multiplying or dividing, and it just is based upon what you have. So. This says to take f of x, which is this, and add g of x. So I'm going to do that. Um, you know, it's a good idea to put in parentheses, but in the end, I really don't need the parentheses uh, because they're not doing much for me. And I'm just going to combine my like terms. And then that's it. We're just making this from, from two separate functions, sorry, into one function. So x squared won't combine with anything, neither will the 2x. But the minus 3 and the minus 1 will make a negative 4. And now this one has been added, all right? So now I'm going to subtract them. So I'm going to put this in parentheses minus this. And this is where parentheses do matter, because when you subtract, you want to subtract all of this. So this whole adding the opposite, I'm going to go through and add the opposite. But this subtraction, you subtract everything in here. So I'm going to add and take the opposite of this, and I'm going to make this addition. And now you can look at this without parentheses and combine your like terms. So the x squared term doesn't have anything to combine with, neither does the 2x. But now it's negative 3 and 1, which give me negative 2. So I get very different answers when I add them versus subtracting them. Next thing I'm going to do is it says to multiply them. So remember, this is what I tell my freshmen, neighbors visiting neighbors. So 2x, I'm going to add the opposite here. 2x is going to visit, and I'm going to get 2x cubed and negative 2x, and then this will visit, and I'll get negative 3x squared and positive 3. And then there's nothing to combine. I guess what you could do is just put it in standard form. Just makes it easier to check later. And so this is the better way to write the answer, although this is correct. 
And then for this one, 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 1. And this is kind of what we're doing now. If I want to simplify this, I should go through and try to factor this. I can't factor this, but I can factor this into x plus 1 and x minus 1. As it turns out, I can't take anything out, so you could leave it like this or like this. But every now and then, remember, like this latest chapter, we could factor that out. All right, and then the last thing says that you are to take, this is the composite function, so this means that g is going into f. So that means all of this is going to go in here, and it's going to go right where the x is. So x is going to come out, and that's going to go in its place. And when 2 is multiplying x, now 2 is going to multiply all of this. So 2, and then x squared minus 1, and then the minus 3. And now I'm going to distribute and get 2x squared minus 2 with the minus 3. It's going to give me 2x squared minus 5 as my answer. And now the other one is this time this means f is going to go into g. So this time all of this is going to go in here. So normally x is squared, now 2x minus 3 is going to be squared. Uh, with that minus 1 still there. And if you remember the 2x minus 3 squared just means there's two of these. Okay, um, I am going to add the opposite, so I'm going to get 4x squared, and then I'm going to get a negative 6x, and now this visits, I get another negative 6x, and I get a 9, and there's the minus 1 that was there, and then if I combine like terms, I get 4x squared plus negative 12x plus 8. Okay, so that is... Um, that one, sorry, just thinking. Um, and you know, I realized these problems didn't make them on there, so um, I just want to do one of these over here with you guys and then let you do the, uh, the rest on your own. So um, don't be afraid with the exponents that are fractions. So for instance, if you add these, remember adding and subtracting is very picky. These are not like terms. You cannot add them. But multiplying below it is not picky, and this is where we organize the numbers and the x's, and sometimes there's some numbers to combine, but there's not, but this is when the bases are the same, you can add the exponent, um, you get two and a half or five halves is the better way to write it, okay? Um, and then this one, it just means that g is going into f, like that, so all of g is going to go right in there. So normally x is being squared, this is going to be squared. So 2 is still there, but now x to the 1 half is going to be squared. And this is just your exponent rules. I'm just going to distribute that in. It multiplies when it does that, and you're going to get 2x um, because half of x is 1, so it's the first power. And then this means, see this versus this, the only difference is there's a 2. This just means, okay, take your new function, 2x, and it means to make this x become 2. And when you do that, you get an answer of 4. So now you try this side, okay? And then this one just means, you know, once you get your answer for C, which we, we have it already, okay, to just, here it is, to just put a 2 in there, like that, okay? And again, these are the same bases, so think of this as an exponent of 1, or 2 over 2, and now the base is the same, add the exponents. And um, when you're done, uh, the idea is checking the answer with the substitute, okay? All right, so note the time, and then we're going to pick back up again. All right, so continuing on, we are now finding inverses. Um, and, you know, we're still in Chapter 5 review. This is going <laughs> to be a while. So um, the first step of inverses, remember this is y is to switch x and y around. And our goal is now to solve for y to get this y by itself. So when you're solving for y, you guys, again, we're just working backwards in the order of operations to do that whenever you solve for something. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the 3. So this side is going to become x plus 3. And I still have the 1 half with this cubed root stuff here. 
Uh, so I move that. The next thing I'm going to get rid of is the multiplying. One half is multiplying, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 2, which makes this goes, go away. And I'm going to multiply this whole side by 2. And for this problem, you guys, you know, just leave it like this. You don't even need to um, distribute that 2 in there. Uh, now, did that. I'm going to get rid of my exponent, which is the cubed root. So I'm going to cube both sides. Cube this side, and then you're just at y plus 2. And then that means I'm going to cube this whole side. I'm going to cube the 2 and that. So I do want you to go ahead and cube the 2 and look at this as 8. And now the last step to get uh, y by itself is just subtract 2. So what this would have meant in first semester is our parent function would have been x cubed. We would have uh, had a t-chart for that. And then that shape would have stretched 8, left 3, and down 2. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Um, first, I'm going to change this f of x into y. And now I'm going to switch x and y around. And my goal is now to just get this y by itself, which is pretty simple compared to the other one. I'm going to subtract 3 first. So that's my problem. And I'm going to divide by 2. And you can write your answer like this. Or you could take each term and divide it by 2. So dividing x by 2 is like a half of x. And then minus 3 halves. And so again, this is just a line. Here's your mx plus b. Okay, um, And then the other two, this is the more recent chapters. We're going to switch x and y around. And I am going to put oops, the x on the other side. So first, uh, this is weird. You know, you got, this is what we're solving for, and it's in the exponent. So that's that weird side of that blue paper. Even though it's y, not x, it's still what we're solving for. So I need to isolate this base and exponent. And 3 is not part of that base in the exponent. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of 3 by multiplying both sides by 3. So that gives me 3x. And now I'm ready to turn it, according to my page, into an L. So I'm going to have log 4 of 3x. I'm going to protect it in parentheses equals y minus 3. And now the last step to make it y equals, I'm just going to add 3 to the other side. But that 3 is going to be outside of parentheses. And then the next one, um, again, this is, uh, I'm going to switch x and y, but move it around. There's an understood 10 there. And this again, this is weird because we have log and we're solving for y. So we need to isolate the log, which it's isolated. There's nothing else over here. So I'm ready to do my e. So I'm going to have 10 to the x power equaling y minus 3. And now to get y by itself, I'm just going to add 3. So when we would have done in the other one is we would have graphed 10 to the x and then moved everything up 3. So now you try these. All right. And again, um, note the time. And then when you're done, you're going to come back and pick up on the other part. Okay. All right, so picking up on the graphing. So this time, um, your t-chart is all going to depend on if it's growth or decay. So growth, remember, in exponents looks like this, because that's what we're starting out with. And you use for x, you use 0, 1, and 2. And then for decay, decay looks like this. And for x, we use uh, the negative numbers, but in this order. All right. So first, um, let's figure out the transformations. So uh, this, sorry, means it's going to flip. And it's going to go right 3, and it's going to go up 1. So I'm going to make my t-chart. And I'm going to use 0, 1, and 2. And I'm going to leave the flip, the right, the up, out, and just make a t-chart for 2 to the x. All right? So 2 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the 1st is 2. 2 to the 2nd is 4. You could even get another one in here. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. And now what I'm going to do is apply my a in the table. And that just says multiply them all by negative 1. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, and negative 8. 
So this growth shape is going to flip over. Just keep that in mind. So I'm going to graph, I don't need this y anymore. I'm going to graph these. So 0, negative 1, uh, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 4, and 3, negative 8. All right, and again, this was flipping, so if you want to see what it should be looking like. Um, and remember, exponents. Exponents have a wall right now that go like this. Logs, L, have a wall that go like this. So my wall right now is like this. And since points are moving up, my wall will be moving up. And if it helps, this is the wall. Y flies by at 1. You'll want that later. Um, but anyway, I'm going to take these points and move them right 3 and up 1. Right 3 and up 1. And graph these. So let's talk about our domain and range because of this wall. So with the domain and range, um, you've got arrows on both ends, you know, but that doesn't mean it's infinity to infinity. But since your wall is at y, y is range, the wall affects the range. So your domain is negative infinity to infinity. Don't worry about that. But your range is affected by the y wall. And it's just going to go, you know, it's going from the bottom up. So it's going to go from negative infinity to 1. So let's try the next one. The next one, um, this is decay because this is less than 1. So that's not something I didn't say. When your base is bigger than 1, it's growth. And when it's less than 1, it's decay. So this is less than 1. It's going to be decay. Uh, the 2 is going to make it stretch. This is going to make it go left 1. And this is going to make it go down 3. So now I'm going to make my t-chart. I'm going to make it this way. More room. Uh, I'm going to use negative 2 and negative 1 and 0. So again, my t-chart is going for 1 half to the x power. So let's just start with 0. 1 half to the 0 power is 1. 1 half to the negative 1. So remember, that just flips it to 2. The negative exponent flips it. And now it's 2 to the first power. 1 half to the negative second power. Again, the negative flips it. So now it's 2 to the second power. And now what I'm going to do is take my A, apply it to my stretch. So I'm going to take all of these Y's and multiply them by 2. Oh, and sorry, this should have been a 2 here. Um, so double it, double it, double it. You don't need that Y anymore. I'm going to graph these. So negative 2, 8, negative 1, 4, and 0, 2. And you can see this shape starting. Um, but they're going to move, and again, remember, exponents have a wall that go like this. So the down 3 will be moving them down. And that's at y, flies by at negative 3. But now I can go left 1, down 3, left 1, down 3, left 1, down 3, and graph my curve. And again, um, the wall... Your domain and range, since the wall is at y, that affects your range. So domain is free. It's at negative infinity to infinity. And your range is going up. And then when it tries to go down, it hits the wall. So negative 3 and up is your wall. Okay? Um, so let's try the next set. These are logs. Um, if you want, maybe pause. And after 1 and 2, actually jump over to the back if I can get there and do these since it's fresh in your mind, and then you can come back and pick up the log problems, okay? So I guess I'll let you decide there, note the time or don't note the time, um, but in the end we want these four to get graphed. So logs, we're actually going to do this a little bit differently than exponents, but we're going to use the idea of exponents to graph these. So first let's just figure out um, our transformation. So this is going to flip it, this is going to make it go right, and this is going to make it go up. And we talked about that we don't actually get to graph these because these numbers with a log don't make sense in our head. So what we do is, sorry, I got cut off there. Um, so when we find the inverse, we found that shortcut that just said the inverse was 2 to the x. So this is what we make our first t-chart out of is 2 to the x. And again, think of this as growth like we did up here. So we're going to use 0, 1, and 2. And 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd. And then take these points, and you're going to switch them now. So 
So we're going to move down here for a new x and y. Switch them around. So 1, 2, 4, 0, 1, 2. And now these are the points for the log function. And now we're going to apply our transformations to this table. This table is done. So again, let A, the flip, the stretch, the compress, apply to your y's. So make a new y, and they all just multiply by negative 1. You don't need these anymore. And if you remember, growth in a log looks like this. Okay, so I'm going to graph 1, 0, uh, 2, negative 1, and 4, negative 2. And I just realized growth in a log looks like this, but since it's flipping, I didn't mention that, it's going to look like this. That's my, my fault. I forgot to flip. Okay, so now I'm going to take these points, and if you think about your wall first, your wall in the log goes, goes like this. It will be going to the right one if you want to go ahead and move that. But now all these points are going to go right one and up two. So right one, up two, right one, up two, and you've got this. So now when you go for domain and range, this is x is depressed, and x is depressed at one. And so x affects domain. So it's getting stopped when you go left for negative infinity, but not to the right for infinity. So domain is going to be from 1 to infinity. And the range, you don't worry about. There's no wall affecting it. So that gets negative infinity to infinity. So let's take a look at 4. 4, um, first, let's do our transformations. That's going to stretch it. And then write 4. There's no up or down. Uh, and then you need to get the inverse for your first t-chart, so 1 half to the x. Um, let's do this. So it is decay, and remember decay we use these numbers. So negative 2, negative 1, and 0. So let's put 0 on there first. 1 half to the 0 power is 1. 1 half to the negative power. The negative is going to flip this to 2, and now it's 2 to the first power, which is 2. And 1 half to the negative second power, the negative is going to flip it, so now it's 2 to the second power and you get 4. But we don't graph those, so we're going to switch them. I'm going to switch them down here. And these are now my x's. And the x's are now the y's. And now we're going to start to put the transformations. A always goes in the table, so I'm going to double all my y's. And I don't need that y anymore. I'm going to graph 4, negative 4, 2, negative 2, and 1, 0. And again, decay looks like decay no matter what, an exponential or logarithmic. So you can see that curve start to happen. Um, before I transform those points, I'm going to take my wall and move it right 4. And this is the wall. X is depressed at 4. And now I'm going to take these points and just go right for 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and get this done. Okay? And so now when we talk about the wall um, and domain and range, the domain is x and the wall is x. So my domain is going to go from 4 to infinity. And my range won't have any walls to affect it, negative infinity to infinity. So now you can pick up and you can finish the rest of the graphs here. Okay. And then, oh my god, is this ever going to end? I'm doing this all at once. You guys are doing it in parts. Um, is the solving part. So again, note the time. And then you can pick back up and do the solving portion. Um, and again, it's one long video, so just stop and hopefully you're always coming back to it. Okay, so I never left. Uh, we're going to be solving. So again, these are all weird because we have x in the exponent and we have x in a log. So you should be looking on that side of your blue page. Um, and the big difference is, does it have a constant or does it not have a constant? So the um, question is, do I have my better calculator? Okay, so this problem has no constant. You might want your exponent table. And you're looking for that same base between 2 and 4. That same base is 2. So I'm going to rewrite 4 as 2 to the second power. So there's 4 to the 2x. And this one doesn't have to change. It's negative x. I'm going to make it negative 1x minus 0.5. And now that the bases are the same, you could ignore them. And the exponents are your problem. You're going to get 4x on the left. 
And now to get x by itself, I'm just going to, same x's, I'm going to add x over. And now to get x by itself, I'm just going to divide by 5. And I've been doing math all day. It's 5 o'clock. And I'm not home, so I'm going to use my calculator and negative half. When I divide it by 5, um, you're going to get x to equal negative 0.1. Okay? So the next problem, this does have a constant, and this is where it says you need to isolate the base. This is the base, this is the exponent, the five's not. So I'm gonna divide by five first. And go ahead and just, you know, you don't need the fraction. This is a nice decimal, 5.2. And then it says once it's isolated, you can make your L. So I'm gonna do log 18, 5.2 equals 16x. Some of you can, again, go to your calculator. The rest of you need to do this. So I'm using my calculator and doing this the fast way, I guess the fast way. Um, 18 and 5.2. And again, that's equaling 16x. And this to three decimal places is 0 0.570 equals 16x. And now to get x by itself, I'm just going to divide by 16 and that's going to give me 0 0.036 as my final answer. So the next two problems, um, these both actually have a constant, which they do below as well. Um, so it says I need to isolate the log, but I can't right now because there's too many logs. So I'm just going to ignore these logs for now and make this x minus 3 into x over 3. But now I'm going to bring the log back with an understood 10 equaling 2. And now I'm able to make my e. So 10 to the second power is going to equal x over 3. 10 to the second power is 100. And now to get x by itself, just multiply by 3. You're going to get 300 as your answer. And then number 4, um, same idea. I've got to isolate the log, but there's too many, so I'm going to ignore them for now. I'm going to go ahead and bring it down here, though. And it's going to be x times x minus 6. So x times x minus 6 is x squared minus 6x equaling the 2. And now I can do my e. So 4 to the second power is going to equal this. This is 16. And now since there's more than one type of x, I'm going to factor. I'm going to get it into standard form. You have a question very similar to this on the test. So I need, just need factors of 16 because this is simple factoring that get me to 6. And that's going to be a 2 and an 8. And I'll just make the 8 negative. And now what makes them negative are, or zero are negative two and eight, okay? Um, so now you're gonna try these problems and then, and then that's it because the most recent stuff we're currently in, we'll have had a test. Um, I will have another review ready. I don't know if we're gonna do it. I guess we're just gonna kind of play it by ear and see how far you get, okay?